Hi guys, uh, this is another video um, around Empire. What I want to do is I want to explain how when you have a PowerShell Empire session you can move that to your Meterpreter session. Uh, this is very useful if you want to uh, do Metasploit based exploitation further into the system or you have your own Ruby based uh, modules that you've designed and implemented onto the system that therefore you want to use that you can't harness the power of Metasploit because you're in Empire. So this video, um, I've made this video before um, but I've watched it and I've spoken to a few people and they've told me that the video is very hard to understand um, exactly what is going on and why it works uh, without any audio coverage so that's the purpose of this video so here I've got two terminals uh, terminal 1 terminal 2 and I've got a Windows 7 machine that's connected via uh, a LAN a virtual LAN port on the same network so first of all I'm going to um, wipe the database that is currently set up in Empire just so that it's completely clean after that we're going to get a session in Empire once our agent comes back because our session has been set up and has been listing we will see our Windows 7 machine in PowerShell through Empire once that is there we will then um, set up our listener in Empire which will talk to the listener in the interpreter um, in Metasploit sorry, that will give us our, our interpreter shell so we'll talk more about that when we get there so in Empire we have reset uh, shell script so run that now don't care about uh, password okay so no listeners no agents so it means that um, essentially when we wipe the database it has actually wiped the database and it hasn't left any listeners or agents sitting there okay so listeners um, info make that a bit bigger right so set the name so to make things simple this is the um, the, the native agent uh, that we're setting up so that our agent comes in so we'll call this one native just it's simple um, set port let's call it 8080 uh, what else do we need we've got a port there 8080 uh, if you my host is already set up um, interestingly so it seems to wipe database but it does seem to remember the seem to remember the IP address interesting okay uh, when you change the host address don't put in the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash or the colon 8080 yet just put the IP address in it gets the port from the port setting so just good tip to remember if I've had problems with that before in the past okay so it's native which is why we call it native uh, sorry it's native there type name native Okay. Uh, let's also set up. Oh, so execute that list, and there it is. So in the same fashion, set name um, interpreter interpreter set port. Make this one eight 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 eight. Set the type to be an interpreter uh, just so you know I'm using 
uh, tab all the time to auto complete. So, so our example again, if I set type tab, yeah, we've got foreign hop meta native pivot. Uh, they're out of the scope of this video. We're just using the interpreter and the native one at the moment. Okay. List. Um, so execute that. List again. Fantastic. We have our interpreter set as interpreter, native set as native. Fantastic. Well, at this point, I would like to show you um, what is going on because uh, many of you are probably wondering how can you possibly. Uh, migrate a uh, a PowerShell Empire session from here onto a Metasploit session on the same port. So this is on port 8888. This is on port 8080. So on Metasploit session, we start the session, we start the payload, and the payload is set on port 8888, listening. So how does that work? Well, the native part of the listener is actually listening, but the interpreter isn't actually listening on that port. It's not listening at all. And we're going to prove that now. So if I do a net stat on port 8080, yeah, our native, we can see that it's running and it's being owned by Python which makes sense because Empire is running Python. Uh, Metasploit is running Ruby, so it would say Ruby if it was to do with Metasploit. Okay, so let's do the same thing with port 8888. No output because it's not actually listening. So that answers that question of how the hell does that work? Well, it doesn't technically listen at this time. Okay, so now we've got our listeners set up. Let's get a session from our native. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do that so we can get some PowerShell scripts and let's dump that into a command prompt and give ourselves a session. Of course, if you were doing this um, as a pen test or in the reality, you wouldn't just be copy and pasting a PowerShell script into a command prompt. You would be taking this you would be adding it to a PDF or a Word document or um, an email where you've embedded it into a macro in some way, um, some form of phishing attack. Um, phishing attack, sorry. So, but that isn't the, that isn't the purpose of this video. This is just a quick way of getting a, getting a, our agent up and running. So, if you want to learn how to do that, I do have videos that will describe. Um, how to embed macros into Word documents. Uh, there is one on a PDF as well, uh, but you have to have a certain version of Adobe, so it doesn't work as well. The PDF isn't as good. The documents um, through Microsoft Word ones are fantastic, so check that out. Right, so we have our agent. List agents. Okay, there is our agent as a standard user with some horrible name. Uh, if we had three or four, we'd probably rename it and call it something else, but we don't really care because we've only got one, so I'm not really that bothered. Okay, so let's now uh, interact. interact that name info okay this is useful um, two ways of telling this high integrity zero in case you weren't aware zero means that it is unprivileged standard user no admin rights no NT authority slash system nothing 
the same way you can list and it doesn't have an asterisk next to the uh, uh, I can't remember, it's either machine name or username is one of the it's quite obvious it will have a little star next to it I think it's the username, it makes sense for it to be the username so. okay so let's uh, interact again um, and we go inject shellcode again tab completion to Metoprinter. What that will do is it won't actually inject shellcode into Metoprinter. What it will do is it will open the inject shellcode menu. It's just a shortcut by typing in inject shellcode instead of writing it out the name of the module in full. Right. So there we are. The code code execution invoke shellcode. Fantastic. Info on that. Um, personally, I always set the old host because I've had problems. Even though it says it's not required, um, it has caused me problems in the past. That may have been fixed, but I think it's better to have it than to not. So I put my local IP address in. Now these happen to be on the same box, so everything will stay the same. Listener L port set L port to what I'm took to was. Check that. Uh, 8888, I believe it was. 8888. Okay, info again. Set payload. So, this is an example where uh, you can't do tab completion on the payload for some reason. So, you have to type it in full, but I'm just for this video. I'm going to make it a reverse HTTP, but you could make it HTTPS. Works exactly the same. Makes no difference. Okay, if I run that again, localhost agent is set. The listener is the interpreter. Um, listener that we created earlier. The L port is 8888. Shell code is the shell code that it's going to set by default, which is fine. And the payload we've set to reverse HTTP. Okay, so now let's open message exploit on this side. set payload windows interpreter well if you tab complete um, mess exploit does take ages sometimes before it kicks in reverse HTTP in this case show options set all host 192.168.0.100 uh, port set L port 8888. Um, just, just check that. Yep, 8888 is right. So that's all right, that's all right. Reverse HTTP, reverse HTTP. So everything's set up the same. Now, if we go back, uh, oh, so set. Um, let's set exit on session in case there's a problem. False. So, in case you don't know what that means, it means once we start our job and our job is running, so if we do jobs, um, what that will do is if we invoke our shellcode once, we will see our session come up. If we invoke the shellcode, um, sorry, if we invoke the shellcode once, our session will come up. After the session comes up, the job will stop. So what it's saying is that when the session appears, then kill the job. So that's fine if it worked the first time. But if it doesn't work the first time, 
then the job will finish. So then we try and run it again, and it won't work because the job is finished. So it can come in some cases that can be useful, but most of the time that's very annoying. So I set the exit on session to false. So therefore, even if there is, even if you get a session, you will still have your job running. Exploits uh, and also because we've set exit on sessions, we can't just type exploit. I have to exploit minus J to run in the background. Excellent. Right, so that's now running on port eight 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 eight. So therefore, if we now do a net stat minus plan grep out eight 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 eight, we can see we're listing and it's run on Ruby because that is the backend framework that Metasploit works at. Okay, so if we go back to our agents, hopefully it won't have just lost all the settings we just put in there. Ajax interact inject shellcode interpreter info. Nope, good, it's still there. Fantastic. Right, and now we execute. Job has started. And our session has right. Now, if something hasn't gone right, also, when it does that, if you press enter, then you'll actually get your prompt back and you can do something with it. So, now the way to check if this is worked sometimes this doesn't work, maybe that you put HTTP here and you've got HTTPS here. Then the session will still open, and then after 10 seconds, the session will die. So, don't just necessarily assume because you've seen that session one open that it's working. The way to check uh, that I find other people have probably got much other ways of doing it but the, the quick way that I find to do that is to open the sessions session minus interact with one just to type in sysinfo if you get a response back from your sysinfo like this which is good that means it's worked if you type in sysinfo make takes more than 10 seconds generally the session will die and then you'll know that the session was corrupt because it wasn't um, correctly made so therefore it's failed so this is good this has worked everything has uh, come over the way we wanted it to so, so we successfully now have a session that we've got through PowerShell and then we've pushed it from PowerShell over to Metasploit hope that made sense if you have any questions related to this um, let me know and I will try and help you as much as possible. Also, um, get on Twitter, speak to Harmjoy, spell H-A-R-M-J-0-Y. Um, he's fantastically helpful, uh, helped me with a ton of stuff. Very, very useful, down-to-earth um, guy. So any problems, speak to him. Um, he'll be able to point you in the right direction of documentation. Uh, and I hope this video has helped you. So. Any problems? Let me know. Cheers.